Thank you so much for being on time. We have the two faces of research coming up. So two faces, which means two presentations. We have the, and if I'm pronouncing this wrong, I'm so sorry, I've been practicing all morning. Have a supai? Yes. Tribal experience and USA epicenter, who we like to call upon from the Havasupai Nation of Arizona, Diana Sue Ukwala, who is a traditional practitioner, and Carlita Talusi, who is a former chairperson of the Havasupai tribe. Let's have a big round of applause. They come a long way. Gamija, Nasivia, Carlotta, Tulusi, Xidge, Hangu, Bam Gathbug, Bam Gamijma, Matanda, Muijum, Nyawai of Dieke. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting myself and my colleague Diana Suyukwala here today. You have such beautiful country. I am here representing the Havasupai people and also the Havasupai tribal government. I'm here to talk briefly, um, in 20 minutes, they said, about our case against the Arizona State University regarding misuse of Havasupai people's blood samples. We have compiled a um, PowerPoint for you so that you can have a visual feel of where we're from and some of the challenges we face as a small community. We are one of the small communities that live in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. This is the Grand Canyon, um, our Aboriginal territory. Uh, my people have roamed this area in and out of the canyon for many centuries. Um, there we go. The way uh, we survive down there, let's see if this is working. Okay, the way we survive down there is uh, through many forms of farming and uh, tourism. Uh, but this is an aerial shot of the narrow canyon that we are from. And one of the things that we learned throughout this um, legal struggle uh, with scientists from the university was they tend to target remote communities. And this, uh, we happen to be one of their target communities that uh, institutions were seeking for. Here are our farms. We have water going through our canyon, which is called Havasu Springs. And our Havasu Springs uh, sustains us through our livelihood. Uh, we all consume it with our animals, our horses, our uh, dogs and cats. And our main diet is corn and vegetables and apricots. As I mentioned earlier, our main economy is on tourism. The only way in and out of the canyon is through hiking, riding horse, or going through a helicopter. Uh, we, had, we, we took the quick way out. We came out in the helicopter. As you know, as Native people, um, our surroundings is our religion. Uh, this is one of our uh, religious mountains called Wekel Eva, and it represents a male and female. Our Havasu Creek um, develops into several different waterfalls. This is Havasu Falls, which many tourists from all over the world come to visit, and we open our canyon home to visitors. This is uh, Mooney Falls, and um, this is one of the tallest waterfalls in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. This is uh, photos that I have collected of our ancestors uh, that have lived there for many years. Um, on the right-hand side of is um, the, our leaders, our chiefs, and he is my great-great-grandfather. His name was Captain Burrow. Um, this uh, other female woman here is the, um, we are famous for our basketry. She is making a burden basket, and this burden basket was utilized to carry children and crops throughout the canyon. Now I'm going to shift to the actual case that we're here to talk to you about. Um, as you look at this photo before you, these are members of the Havasupai tribal community. 
And the two non-Indians, actually there's three non-Indians in that community, and they are representatives from the Arizona State University. The one on the right-hand side, which is a male, his name is Dr. John Martin. The one on the um, right, um, left from me, but the right of me is Teresa Marco and their lab assistant standing next to them. They came into a community and convinced my tribal council leadership that they will find solutions to diabetes. But they went and used our samples for other studies such as schizophrenia, inbreeding, and the Bering Straits theory, and numerous publications were written used, using many of these samples of my people. This particular shot here is taken at Arizona State University. These tribal members are individuals that work in the Havasupai School and the Havasupai Cafeteria and Nutrition and Clinical Health Representatives. As one of their program processes, they wanted my people to go to the institution and learn about healthy foods and healthy way of preparing foods. Unfortunately, um, in 2006, uh, I was a student at Arizona State University, and we found out just by chance, by listening to a dissertation at the biology department, I happened to be in that room, and I found out that they were using samples of my, my people, my relatives, to study the DNA structure of a goat, the DNA structure of an African-American, and the DNA structure of the Havasupai. And the conclusion of that dissertation was the DNA structure of the Havasupai was structured very differently compared to the, the other samples. And they said that it was due to the fact that we came from a very remote area, and that's how come our DNA was structured differently. These individual people here are victims of that particular scientific research. The one on the, these two people were convinced by Arizona State University to go into our communities, to go into our homes and approach our families and ask them to lend their arm out. And back then, to get blood was to actually strike a needle into your vein. And you know how painful that is to do so, and it's still very painful. And that's how they got the samples. And as soon as they got the samples, they went on the helicopter in an ice chest and drove it four and a half hours to Tempe, Arizona to preserve the samples and put them right into the lab. I can only say that these two people felt very betrayed and very um, lied to, and they no longer work in the health field. Our tribal council leaders um, were informed of this case, and they all felt very important that not only do we stand up for the Havasupai people, there's 700 of us left in the village, and uh, they felt it was very important with the minimal resources that we have that we file a lawsuit, and these two individuals stepped up as leaders and said, this is enough. We have to make sure that this, that this action does not happen to other indigenous people around the world. One of the things that happened to us in our community was main reasons why we did this was to get our blood samples back. And as our religion, the Havasupai religion, when our loved one has passed on to the next world, we make sure that every piece that they have touched or have claimed ownership in this world transfers with them to the next world. So when we found out about this case, that a lot of our blood samples were stored in laboratories um, at ASU, U of A. We even found out that it went to Stanford, across boundary lines to other institutions. We felt it was important we bring those blood samples back of our ancestors. As soon as we got them back, some of the family members were able to take the samples of their loved ones and take them back to their actual places of burial. This was a closing step for some of my families. 
One of the reasons why I added this picture here is I often wonder why they came to my community. What did they want from our community? They just did not want to help us solve diabetes. They wanted to find out our mere existence, how we maintain survival in that harsh canyon, that harsh condition. How did we do that? And this shows just a little bit of the lifestyle that our people maintained. On the right is um, how we carry our children. And on um, this, also this is another relative of mine. And he was into tanning hides and buckskin. I, there are many applications, implications that have occurred over this case. And one of the things that uh, appalled me the most is when the Havasupai Tribal Council filed this in federal court. The federal court didn't want to have anything to deal with it. They tossed it around like a hot potato because of the fact that the blood samples were taken off an Indian reservation, which is federal jurisdiction, onto the state jurisdiction. And they said, no, it's not a federal issue. It's a state issue. So we went back and had to file in state court. So we were going back and forth. We had about 21 um, Arizona Board of Regents attorneys, professors attorneys, and the Havasupai tribe only had one small law firm. But we stood up and we stood our ground and it, la it took us about eight years to finally stand up and say this is enough and we settled out of court. So now uh, my tribe is reluctant to participate in any human subject research project, unfortunately. We also feel that um, the internal review board that every institution has, Arizona State University, University of Arizona, um, have grossly violated their own regulations. Violations of regulation can only result of losing a grant. These professors that you saw in one of the slides, nothing happened to them. They didn't get fired from their positions. They continued on and with their, with their teachings and nothing has happened to them to this day. In conclusion, I um, would like to ask Diana Sue Yukala to come up and share her personal experience of how it was and how it felt to give blood to such a project that she felt very strongly about and how it made her feel. But before I do that, I, I also feel that when tribes are being faced with these offers of huge amounts of money to say, we can come up with a solution, um, and there's a pot of gold at the end, or there's a goal at the end, we also really need to make sure that these internal review board regulations need to be enforced in tribal courts because they're coming off our reservations and make sure that our own court systems are, um, have these kinds of processes in place and tribal governments having these kinds of processes so that we are making sure that we are enforcing these um, types of researches that are being conducted on our people in our community. Um, we also need to know and measure the fact that a lot of my people are, um, English is our second language. Um, we all speak 100% fluent in our language. And we also need to recognize that and also the economic barriers um, that we have when it comes to research uh, families. Um, we also need to look at the educational status of our families that we're looking at. Do these uh, families of, in our community, do they understand what you're saying? Are you translating these agreements to your language? Do, they make, do we make examples that make them connect and make them understand why we are doing these researches? What are the long-term implications? Um, tribes also need to be consulted first within our Arizona state um, for any IRB regulations. Um, right now, we are in conversations with the um, ASU IRB boards, and we haven't made any concrete um, changes and made any recommendational changes, but we are coming to the room and having discussions about 
what should be made right. Um, we are looking forward to um, positive change, and one of the positive changes that we're looking forward to is on April 12th, we are gonna be receiving the president, um, Arizona State University, President Crow, will be coming down to the Havasupai community and apologizing, publicly apologizing to the Havasupai people. We have come a long ways, and I know um, i never been to Canada before, but I've heard a lot of the positive things that uh, your country has done, and we are here to learn about what you are currently doing so that we can go back to our communities, and if my people and my tribal government feels it's important for us to continue research, we will do so at our own time. We also uh, understand that research is needed and we are not against research. We are for research when it is done correctly and it should be done in a positive and upfront, honest manner. Um, in this particular case, unfortunately, the Havasupai tribe people had to be faced with this um, undescribable situation. Um, I had to go into people's homes and tell them that a part of their relatives was in a laboratory at Arizona State University. Um, I had to tell them that their blood was being used for uh, research regarding inbreeding. I had to tell them that our community has been identified as schizophrenics. Um, many, many, many more uh, studies that were out there that were appalling, uh, even to the point where our um, existence in the canyon was being challenged. Uh, one of the dissertations said that we came from Ala um, China and that the Bering Strait theory proved that the Havasupai people came all the way from China. And um, it was very mind-boggling that uh, these um, scientific research studies that would prove such a thing, and we are against uh, any of those dissertations being out there. As of right now, we have received all the dissertations back. We have received as many of the blood samples back that have been found. Um, there's a lot of samples out there that were not found. Uh, these professors did not hold accurate information. They didn't use their data and um, preserve them in the right manner. They called uh, this book called The Red Book. Well, The Red Book has never been found. And uh, the, the Red Book is the fact that once you give a blood, your blood should be identified by your number, logged in, what date it was collected, who was it collected by. All those documents are missing. We, we cannot find them. So they're once... Arizona State University officials found out that the Havasupai people found out that this case was happening. Um, I think evidence was actually being destroyed, in my opinion. But um, I like for my colleague Diana Sue Uquala to come up and say a few words. Um, we've traveled a long ways to be here, and on behalf of my people, uh, the Havasupai tribal government. Um, we'd like to thank you for bringing us all this way to be here. Uh, Chairwoman uh, Bernadine Jones has contacted me and made sure we landed in Ottawa. And I said, we landed in Ottawa. So she sends her, her greetings to me and Diana. Thank you. Hey, Baja, Puya, Kamicha, Hanke Wakima, Makwao Chin, Nil Kwakwadwam Evia, Ban Evum, Nyaywayub Dieke. I say welcome to all of you, man, woman, and I also acknowledge that I hear the people speak in their language, and I said my heart is very happy to hear that. I am a traditionalist from the have a Supai people. 
My name is Diana Sue White W. Kuala. It's been very emotional, very hard to my heart, to my people, to know what they did to my families before me. As I recall, we, we finally got some of the information at the end of our journey. I and some of the council went into Tempe and we did not know if we were gonna get our blood back. But we did have a council meeting with some of the people in Supai. And as they spoke and out of anger and out of hurt and out of love and compassion for their people, their families, I sat and I listened. And I already knew in my heart that sitting there deliberating, being angry, being upset was not the answer. We have